<clears throat> Welcome to the Recruitment Rollercoaster podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Stephen May, who is the co-founder of the Viva Group, who are a group of recruitment companies that operate in the healthcare, optical, and tech markets. They recruit both permanent contract staff, currently have circa 27 people across the group, and have been going for nearly a decade. They've been going for nine years. Stephen, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Um, be looking forward to this. And um, as you know, we're always, always like to start on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> Do you prefer to be called Steve or Stephen? Um, well, Steven. only my wife and my mum call me Stephen. So okay, yeah, we'll call, it sounds like I'm being told off. So <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, we'll, we'll, keep, we'll keep it Steve. Okay, yeah. so um, cool. So how, how did you enter the world of recruitment? Because you've been in it a while. So how, how did you get yeah. into recruitment? Um, probably similar to most people. I, I, I never really grew up thinking that I want to be in recruitment. <laughs> um, I, I had other dreams and aspirations when I, when I was younger. So um, I started out, I, I, was, I played football full time, um, fell out of that and, and naturally went into a sort of sporty field. So trained to be a PT. Um, How difficult was that, by the way? Like the, the sort of, like, I'm assuming, childhood dream, becoming a footballer. Mm. You fall out of football, um, lose your purpose. Yeah. What the fuck do I do now? I thought I was going to. I thought this was it for five years, ten years, or whatever. That that must be difficult. Yeah, yeah, I, 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 absolutely. And and you know, I left school when I was fifteen to go full time to play for Brighton. And yeah. Um, yeah, just presumed like most other teenagers at that age that they're going to make it and going to yeah. be. You're going to be in it for ten years. Financially comfortable. Yeah. And realistically. It, it really is just the top one percent in the world, really, yeah. that ever actually carve a career out in in professional sport. So, yeah, fall, falling out of it, I, I I literally, as you say, didn't know what I wanted to do. How um, old was you at that point? Um, so when I stopped playing full time, I must have been eighteen. Wow, 18, nine, nearly so nineteen. Still proper young then. Still, still proper young, but obviously, you know, my 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 close mates had sort of gone to uni or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know gone and done other 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 things that they were sort of carving out a, a career path whereas I was in Brighton at the time didn't really know what I wanted to do um, yeah. my mate's dad actually gave me a job he, he's, a, he's got a um, telecoms company and yeah initially started off basically packing <laughs> packing phones into boxes and and wow. sending them out from from a warehouse and um, actually it's probably one of the biggest learning curves I had at, at that age because yeah he actually sacked me um, really? because I was because I was trying to play semi-pro um, and work full-time and yeah. kind of just realized actually people in the in the real world I call it that, that actually have businesses they don't really care if you if you still think you're going to make it as a footballer <laughs> if you're if you're if you need to leave at three o'clock to go drive yeah. three hours to a game miles away they don't care so yeah yeah so actually in the end he actually sacked me which which I think did give me a massive kick up the arse just give you that, a bit of perspective yeah a bit of perspective that you know there's there's you, you have to sometimes um you have to just be a bit ruthless and, and yeah I, I still I still see him now and, and I always thank him for doing it because <laughs> basically made, made, made me decide to get out of Brighton I moved to London when I was when I was 19 really um, trained to be a personal trainer and realized that actually the actual training people I didn't necessarily enjoy it was more actually getting people to sign sales, up to yeah. a 10 week Being session a PT and, and is sales. sales it is sales isn't it it is sales, sales and marketing and, and in, in my opinion the best pts are the best are, are the ones who are the best salesmen yeah, the yeah, thing yeah. is i i didn't actually realize you don't associate that selling. normally yeah. yeah it's just like yeah it, 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 exactly i feel like a lot just, of people can get caught in that can't they? i want to be a pt yeah. i'm passionate about health and fitness but and then it's like yeah. oh i've got to talk to strangers and talk to them about the problems they have and challenges they have and yeah. do you know what i mean yeah yeah, and, and exactly that. You've only got to look at, say, Joe Wicks, for example. Like, yeah, he might be a really good PT, but actually he's marketable and he's yeah. clearly got something that people buy. Like, he, he wouldn't just be working for Virgin Active in a gym now and being as success, successful as he is. So yeah. you have to, yeah, it is, it is a lot of sales. And so essentially, yeah, I, I started training a guy, um, got him to sign up to, to some sessions. And at this point, I was like, yeah, I, I want to start earning some more money. Obviously, as you know, London is very yeah. expensive to live. And um, yeah, basically, I, I managed to get a, um, like an induction day with, um, with Hayes. Okay. And, um, was told this the, the guy, um, No, no, this was uh, actually through my stepbrother, knew someone that worked okay, there cool. and, and managed to get me an interview. But 
I, I, I went there as the only person who didn't have a degree. Yeah. Um, didn't, I, I hadn't even shaved. So I, I just didn't know the business world. You didn't go in your track suits and that. No, I, I didn't go in my track suits. <laughs> I, I did manage to put a shirt on, but yeah, basically I, I got, I got down to like the final, the final two out of about 50 and, and basically they said they'll come back to me with an offer. Um, and then I, I went back to work that afternoon, was training the guy and said, oh, I'm, I'm think I'm going to leave. I'm going to take a job. He's like, what are you going to do? I was like recruitment. He was like, well, I work in recruitment. Why don't you come and interview wow. at my firm, which was just down the road. So yeah, I went and interviewed with them and, and basically I think I was on like 12 K a year as a PT with, with some bonus, obviously yeah, for, yeah, your comms yeah. for selling. And I think they offered me like 25 K and I was like 19. I was like, Balling. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, basically I just said, well, where do I sign? And, and God, God's honest truth, I did not know what recruitment was. Yeah, I was going to say, what was your perception at that point? It was just... I, I honestly, I, I, didn't, I didn't even really understand what, what recruitment was. I, I couldn't yeah. understand how they actually made money. They said it's a lot to do with sales. You're getting people to, to basically yeah. take jobs. I was like, uh, I'll give it a go. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. yeah, basically. So basically, joined them instead of Hayes, and um, yeah, and that that was how I so I ventured in <laughs> and uh, then, into recruitment. I love that. So then, so then you worked there for five, was it five or so years? I saw on LinkedIn. Um, I think I was there for about four years. Yeah, four years. Yeah, four, four so years, real, yeah. real solid stint in in one yeah. recruitment business, right? And just mm. give me a bit of context. So a lot of recruiters listen to this, likewise with, with business owners. But were, was that a big firm or was it a sort of small growing business or? Um, at the time, they were—I would say—a small, small growing business. I think there was about—I think I was like employee number ten, maybe. Oh wow! Employee okay. Number eleven. Um, and what was the market? Um, so they did—they did pharma. So okay. they, they worked with like GSK and a lot of uh, big firms. But there was an, another guy that had come in, and he—he'd he'd actually started doing some some stuff on with High Street Healthcare. Um, and I think at the time that was where the need was. So that was just the market I was, I was put into. I didn't necessarily have a choice. So, um, I worked very closely with him. Um, okay. and yeah, quickly obviously came out of probation, started doing deals, started realizing, oh, actually this is, you know, if you, if you, if you work hard, there's a formula here where you can actually make, make good money. And yeah. at this point I'm, you know, 2021, 20, my mates are, you know, living on student loans. So when we were going out, you know, I was, I was going over to Kingston a lot and, and you know, <laughs> they had like a tenner to spend and I had like a couple right. of hundred quid to spend. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. I, I, on a uni night, I was, you know, um, so yeah, it, yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, so yeah. They, and, and then as, as that, as, as the company grew, my, my role within the company also grew. Um, so I, okay. I quickly became the manager of, of the department. The other guy moved on. Um, and I grew the team. I think I had like six or seven people yeah. by. And was by this the point in healthcare? Was, sorry. Yeah, this was in healthcare. Yeah. So this okay. was this was uh, sort of optical pharmacy dentists. So real sort oh, of high okay. street, um, high street healthcare. And was that um, temp or perm? Sorry, is it contract perm? Perm. perm. Yeah, all, all, all perm. Um, okay. All right. So which which I, which I enjoy because. You, you can kind of it, it, it's a it's it's a slightly longer process, obviously, than than yeah. um, than, than contract. contracts and. Yeah. Um, you know, having a lot of client contacts as well from from a young age, I think, really helped me uh, as as a person. I, I'm very comfortable around um, older people as I, you know, growing up. So I, I felt that even though I was young in the market, I could still go into a meeting and, and hold my own. Mm, nice, I like that. So obviously, what what I really want to dig into is is you growing Vivid Group and you being a recruitment business owner. But just just as we're talking about this, I guess. In, in sort of hindsight, looking back, what what do you think enabled Steve May to, to become the manager and not just someone that was an employee who just recruited, build X amount a month and, and didn't progress? Like how how did you capitalize on in being that business and grab the opportunities that you had? What what do you pull it down to, do you think? Just for people listening who want to progress, want to make the most mm. out of the recruitment career, how did you maximize that opportunity and become a manager and leader in, in that business, do you think? Um, I, I, I would, I, I think, um, it's, it's the, if, if you're, if you're the person that's first in the office and last leaving at, at, at a young age, I think senior folks see that and go, Jesus, he's, he's hungry. Yeah. Um, and I that think, or, or, or I would, or I would hope, and this is certainly how I feel now as a business owner, I would look at that person and think, yeah, they've got the grip between their teeth. They've, they've got something that they want to, they want to achieve. Um, so for me, yeah, for sure, I, I, I really do think that the, the hardest workers within any business will always do well or always do 
you know, always have at least at least have a chance. Respect, at least have, have a chance. chance, right? Yeah, I, 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 absolutely. And and you know, I I massively relate that to probably my sporting background that I'm yeah. extremely extremely competitive. I, I hate losing. Even mm. if I'm playing Uno at home with my wife, I, I hate losing. <laughs> yeah, I'm, um, I'm the same. How, so, so I was, so, was going to ask that. Like, I'm sure it still translates now into you being a business owner. But mm. I mean, I'm sure you. It's like a proper typical. Uh, like background for a recruitment business to look at, isn't it? Yes, yeah, Steve, what mm. sports teams are we involved in? All oh, right, yeah, it's competitive. Yeah. You should be all right in recruitment. Like it's a proper classic mm. thing to look mm. out for. But I guess you being an, you playing professional, playing at that top level, like how how did that actually translate in helping you in recruitment? And why do you think that that's a real common thing that people look for? Is is it just being the, being competitive, or what, what other do you, things do you think it helps? Yeah, I think a, a, mi- a mix of all of them. So I think. Um, you know, when you play competitive sport, you've, you've, you've won, you've got to deal with pressure depending yeah. on the level, the level you play at. You know, I, I was playing in, in front of some big crowds at the time. So yeah. dealing with pressure, I think also I was very lucky in, in when I was at Brighton, my manager throughout, I, I've got a lot of respect for him and, and, and still do now. And I think actually he instilled a lot of, a lot of qualities in me that I, I stick to today in terms of, you know, time, Timekeeping for me was was you know you used to get fined if you were late. So if you were late yeah. two minutes to training, you get fined. And I, I was earning like fifty pounds a week uh, yeah. uh, as a, as, a, as a footballer in, as, a, as a youth team player. So you know if you're getting fined a tenner, you know that's, <laughs> you, 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 get, you, you get basically getting fined a day's a day's wage for, yeah. for being a minute late. You know if you if you if you have dirty um, dirty boots or dirty kit, that's fine. So all of these things have really mm. taught me you know. Good being presentable yeah you know to turn up looking you know looking your best no, no matter what um being on time dealing with pressure and and i think really resilience and mindset mm. of, of, of 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 trying to and and success isn't necessarily a, a monetary value thing in, in my opinion yeah you can I be agree. you can you can be an a, a, a extremely successful postman so yeah. for me it's not it's not about the money you earn it's about how people perceive you as a person and mm. if i think and we'll probably come on to it, but you know, leadership for me is, is people buying into you. Yeah. It's, it's buying into your vision. It's not just, um, you know, Oh yeah, this company's really good and they're going to pay me loads of money. It's well, how, how do people buy into you and, and how do people trust and believe you that you're going to lead them in the right direction? So yeah. a lot of these values that I picked up off of, off of my coach, Dean, Dean Wilkins, brother of, um, of Ray Wilkins. So he, he, he taught me a lot growing up and, and I don't think he probably realizes that he did, but yeah, for sure. A lot of the, and, and he was tough. He was, he was horrible at times. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Yeah, he was yeah. really horrible. But now I look back, I, 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 I have a lot of respect for him as a, as a great man manager. Mm. I, I, no, I think, I think, I think that's, I think when you're in a small growing recruitment business, I think, mm. I think, it, I think really for whoever's listened, don't really underestimate sort of how much opportunity there is in really building those relationships internally as you said doing all those things that you just said in within your recruitment business will mean that steve may get the nod to become the first manager or leader or mm. it, it will enable you to present or uh, get opportunities that present themselves to you and mm. i think you're completely right it's about how you're perceived it's how people talk about you when you're not in the room and, yeah. and that's if you really double down on that put in the work be a good person and th- those opportunities will come to you and if you, if you want them as well. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think that's really interesting, the, the way that you spoke about that. So had you always wanted to... So I guess just to sort of wrap that up then. So I was going to say, yeah. had you always wanted to have your own recruitment business? But like, what, was you a good biller then? Like, where, where did the confidence and where did the sort of thought process come of Steve, who yeah was a PT, went into recruitment for four years and then now obviously started your own recruitment business like where did that come from and where did the confidence come from for that yeah I think yeah I've, I've, I've always built and I've always been a I've, I've always been a good biller um and and you know for me billing and, and doing well it within a business is is my sort of competitive edge I, I want to outbill everyone in the business okay. even, even now I still bill now and I want to outbill everyone yeah. I understand now that actually <laughs> my, my, my job role is, 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 is different. And if, if I can, if I can help someone else out with everyone else, then, then for me, that's, that's just as good. But yeah, I, I, from, from a young age, you know, the, the competitiveness has always, has always been there. Um, I've got two older brothers that used to, used to bully me and beat me up. So I've always had to fight. <laughs> I've always had to fight to, to, to get anything anyway. So yeah, I think what, what, yeah, when I was at, at, at Skills Alliance, um, 
yeah, I, I just, I, 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 my mindset was that I had nothing to lose. I, mm. I, I want I, I want to, I want to learn as much as I can here. Um, and then, you know, I got to a point where I just felt, I felt, um, I felt like I'd probably achieved everything I could, that you could yeah. within, within, within that business. And, and to be honest with you, I, I, ne- I just thought I'd go and join another firm. I never thought yeah. that I would set up my own business. Cause I, you know, this, I, I'm only How 22, old are you now? 20, really? 20, 22. Yeah. 20, wow. 22. So I'd been doing it for three years. I'm, I'm 22. I was like, well, I'll just go and work for a, a bigger firm where yeah. I can get, a, I can get a better base salary. I've got more chance to, to progress, grow a bigger team. Um, and yeah, I, I'd interviewed a few places, had quite a few offers. And then as I was, as I was chatting to one of my clients, he, he literally said to me, look, if you, if, if you leave, we will work with you. We, we don't like your firm. We like you. Mm. And if you're not there, we're not going to work with the firm. So that started, that, that rang, that rang bells really with me. And I was I like, just well, planted the seed, just planted the seed. Yeah. And, and obviously, you know, I've got, I had non-competes and stuff in my, in my contract. So I had to look at well, how, how can I do this? How, how can I set mm. my own thing up? And essentially, yeah, I, I just thought, well, I've got nothing to lose. I'm 22. I'm single. I've got no one depending on me at yeah. all. What's the worst that could happen? What is the like, worst that, that can happen? That, yeah. that, that, that job's going to be there for me in six months time. I love that. Why not? It's, so, why not it's, so, it it's such an underrated question to ask yourself that mm. with stuff like that, I think. Because it really like that. That, that's certainly what, because 100%, no doubt, I'm sure you still had voices in your head saying, Steve, who are you to do this? You've been doing it three, four years. Yeah. What yeah, you on, like, who's, who's, like, who's going to take you seriously, blah, blah, blah. Mm. But I mm. think when, if you really are having those doubts, like, ask yourself that question, what is the worst can happen? And if, yeah. that, if it is that you, you try and you fail, well, um, mm. as you said, I'm sure there's, there's going to be a recruitment business that you can go to and say, look, I had always thought about starting my own recruitment business. I tried it. Mm you know what, it actually wasn't for me. And this yeah. is what I found really difficult. And what, what that made me learn is that I'm someone that is, is meant to be employed for someone and really to maximize yeah. that. I want to be a great leader in a company. And so I think it's such a great question to ask yourself that, that can mm. help with that. So did yeah, you, absolutely. so then, so obviously the, the wheels were in motion then with you thinking about that, what's the worst that can happen? Yeah. Did you start, <clears throat> so did you start with someone else? Yeah, so um, I got on really well with um, with one of the guys that I'd brought in and, and trained up, and and he was a really good biller. Um, and actually, I mean, we're 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 kind of polar opposites, really, with our outlook. He's very he's very cautious, and I'm completely not. <laughs> um, so, but at the time, I guess we 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 didn't know that. That's kind of um, that's come to come to light as as we've as we've grown and, and moved yeah. forward, which. And don't get me wrong, that that is a really good quality to have and and probably one of the reasons why him and I have worked so well together uh, moving forward. So he basically said to me, look, if you're leaving, I'm going to leave. I'm only here because I'm I'm buying buying into you. So I just said to him, well, look, this is what I'm doing. If you want to go 50-50, you can do it. If you don't, I've got no problem at all. I'll do it on my own. And he was like, yeah, absolutely. So... To, to a degree he, he bought into me and, and and took a risk with with, with me um and yeah and and, and we just so, so we just what, set the world's in motion and 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 set up essentially so what, so what was the game plan mate let's because i think that's so that the the first year taking the leap is what people are most worried about i feel like mm. and people may never get to that point but may always think about it so i guess what what was the 22 year old steve may game plan for this then how are you going to do you, <laughs> never, you never had your own business before um, no. been recruitment for three, four years, good Billa. What, mm. what was the game plan? Um, so an, a, initially, obviously we, what we didn't want to do was go in and work in the market that, that we were in course, one, yeah. because obviously of, of our non covenants, yeah. but, but also, um, a big thing for me is obviously being able to diversify. You, you, you don't want to have just one market and, and maybe we'll, we'll touch on that. Um, you know, if we touch on some of the Corona stuff that's going on, because yeah. I think that's affected a lot of companies that have got 30 consultants in one market. In so one market. Yeah, you're right. For, for, for me, I, I said to him, we don't just want to have one market. Having a non-compete for six months is actually a good thing because it forces us to go out and BD in mm. new markets and get revenue and build relationships in, in new markets. So initially, so our, our, our business from day one and still to this day has been organically grown and self-funded. We've, we've never taken a penny of investment. We've never okay. had an overdraft. We've never had a loan. So how, how much, sorry to buy him, but how much runway did you give yourself? Like, cause I think that's a good thing to some practical advice. Like, did you, did you have like a six month runway if I didn't make any, cause I think that helps with 
you mm. making better decisions? Because I think a lot of people, if they find themselves in a position where they give themselves two months or three months, I mean, I actively ask people, how much money should I have the bank or runway mm. I should have when I start my own business? And the common advice was three to six months. So you're not making decisions that, I don't know, maybe force you to make decisions you don't really want to make, but it's because you want to mm. get money in the bank and you're worried about not getting money in the bank. So I guess, how much yeah. of a runway did you give yourself? Um, to, to, to be honest, we, 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 never really, we never really said, right, let's give it a go for six months and see if okay. it works. It was, and maybe this is, this is my mindset. My mindset was when we're at a point where we can hire people, when, we, when we're at a point where we can move into an office or move into a bigger office, my, my mindset was never that this wasn't going to work. Okay, my fair. mindset was always that this, this is going to work. So yeah. if, if, if it means that, that him and I don't earn a penny for a year, two years, that's absolutely fine because this will eventually work. And yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, the first six months to a year, we, we pretty much didn't earn a penny. Did he, you not? He was, living, he was living at home, so he was, um, <laughs> he was all right. But I, I, I had- Where was you then? Was you still in London? I, I was renting, yeah. So, so was you working out of your room? I was working uh -huh. out of my room, yeah. So Ooh. we both work in our room and I lived in South London and he, he lived in North London. So there was a lot of calls on the phone. But actually, I look back now and that was by far the toughest period of my life. And, yeah. I, and, and, and actually now where we are now working from home, is obviously very, very different um, scenario. But yeah, and, and for me, that, that was the motivation. Our motivation was let's get enough in the bank so we can go and move into an office. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we literally moved, we moved to London Wall and, um, and we literally worked out. <clears throat> of a floor of, sorry, someone's called me. It was at right. the bottom floor um, of, of, of London Wall buildings. We had rats in there. Um, there was literally, <laughs> we, we, we basically shared a desk, um, but we made it work. But that, I think, I think, being out of your comfort zone or being in a position where you have to fight and it's kind of sink or swim, I think is, it shows the integrity. It shows the balls of, of someone if they can get out of that situation rather than yeah. give up. And, 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 and him and I are both very resilient and, and we, we just fought and, and, and worked really hard to, to, to make it work and, and, and eventually got, got enough revenue in to move into a bigger office and a bigger office and so, hired okay. people and, and moved it from there. So let, let's just, um, just, just for a sec, I think, as you said, that first year was probably one of the toughest periods for you. So just before we yeah. talk about how things start to escalate, evolve and, and snowball, I guess, so as you're talking about there in the situation where it's sink or swim, which meant you just had to take action. There was no plan B. It was going to work. Right. So yeah. work from home. How, so how long did it take to make your first deal then? Do you remember? Um, and how did you did reckon, we, what markets did you go for then? How did you think about that? What so was we, the... We, we, so we went into we went into a pharmacy market which neither of us had worked in, but was very similarly aligned to the optical market that we'd worked. Okay. Um, in terms of the process, in terms of the hoops you have to jump through to, to, okay. to get on a PSL or, or to get. So it was a bit familiar, so, but it was a different market, which helps. But it was a different yeah. market, yeah. So, um, so that that's that's the market we thought. Well, look, the the, the fees are lower than, than what our current market was, but actually there's some volume there. So. We went off the volume initially just to, we'd rather have a little bit of revenue coming in rather than just trying to, you know, trying to land a whale or yeah, a massive yeah, yeah. deal. So, yeah, so we, we, we grew it that way by, by just sort of drip feeding in for the first two, three months. I think we did our first deal probably actually within, within about a month we did our first deal. Really? Um, and, yeah, and it was just like, it was it, to probably still to this day, it's probably my favorite deal that we've ever done because it was like, you know, we, we had, we had bills that we had to pay and we were like, shit, we need, we actually, we actually really need this. So yeah, know, yeah, we, yeah. We, we probably both called the candidate about eight times within the week <laughs> when, she, when, when she was meant to join just to make sure you take joined. It? And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then we both probably called or texted her a hundred times throughout the first three months to make sure she came out of Love probation. That. So, um, so, but yeah. Okay. And, 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 we, and we, yeah. And, and then, you know, that went in well and then we started dropping in a couple more and um and then and then we and then we could really see the potential here of well actually this is a good market, let's let let's grow this as well. And then, you know, when we come out of our non compete and at you. this point yeah. I've got I've you know, we we've got all of our clients contacting us going, Look, I've got this job, I've got that job, but we wanted to be squeaky clean and yeah, and, yeah. and you know, respected the, the the other guy. Um, even though they'd closed down that market because I was running and they just closed it down. We just, we just thought there's no, there's no point. Not worth it. Um, it's not worth it. Yeah. Um, okay. 
And then just a quick one, because I think, again, this is what other people are worried about. They can't speak to their clients for six months or whatever. Like, was this just straight smashing the phones, right? We're going off this market. Let's yeah. work out who you want to try and work for. Pick up the phone, speak to them, just straight up BD, make it happen. Yeah, 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 yeah ab- 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 absolutely. So, you know, in, in those days... <sighs> You, you you weren't able to send an email to someone on LinkedIn and hope they come back to you, you know? So yeah, yeah. yeah head, 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 head hunting, almost boiler room type. You know, we were just a hundred, 200 dollars a day, just speaking to as many people as we can. Um, and you know, when, when you know, when you know there's, 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 there's an end goal in, in mind, doing 200 calls, 300 calls a day doesn't seem like a lot. Now yeah. it does. Cause now it's, it's, it's a very, we're in a very different market and a very different mm. way of, of, of recruiting. And, you know, people don't want to be headhunted when they're at work. You know, they, they, they'd they rather a different approach. So, yeah, that was, yeah, B, B, BD and relentlessly, as soon as we got a live job signed off, both of us would go at it a, a, a million miles an hour and we pretty much wouldn't stop until we'd got at least a short list of three or four candidates in so that we knew we were going to cover the role and, yeah. and, and hopefully one of the four would, would get off of the job. Okay, so last question on sort of year one then, I guess sort of just a sort of, um, finalize that no, knowing what you know now then what what advice do you think what advice would you give yourself going into year one that you wish you had what what would that be going into year one um probably know how to run a business <laughs> which is okay. obviously because uh, uh, to be honest with you him him and i just recruited we weren't we weren't yeah. businessmen. We, we didn't know how to run a business that's something we've we've learned but what i what i would have probably done is actually learn a, a bit more about the running of a business yeah, about yeah. PAYE VAT. Yeah. What was you most tax. surprised about like with business work? Cause I think that's <laughs> a real, that's a real common thing, isn't it? It's like what? So I can't, yeah. that's why all those businesses uh, exist f- to help Steve start his own recruitment business. And look, Steve, you just worry about billing. We'll do the rest. So mm-hmm. like, what, what was you mo- most surprised about where like, Oh my God, I've, this is what, how, what do I do? Like how, like <laughs> um i was probably uh, to be honest with you I, I was probably most surprised at how bad a lot of accountants are um <laughs> which, which, sound, which sounds really weird but we had we had we, we've got an absolutely amazing company that we use now and, and they're you know our financial advisors and stuff but at the time you know we were just two yeah. two young lads in a in, in a box room in in the city um trying to find an accountant and you know we had three or four in our first couple of years that you know, weren't doing things properly, were yeah. leaving, leaving, you know, filing tax returns late. So we were getting penalized. So yeah, I think from a, from a business perspective, actually just understanding VAT, PAYE, yeah. corporation tax and actually understanding and even personal tax and things like that, understanding it a little bit more so you can get ahead of it. Mm. Because when you become a business owner, you know, everything's taken care of usually when you're an employee, when you become yeah. a business owner, and you're thinking, oh yeah, I'm 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 taking five hundred pounds, a thousand pounds out of the business a month. Oh, this is amazing, or whatever. And then eighteen months down the line, you then get a tax bill. You're like, oh, I didn't actually think that this. You know, you, you, yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, you know, know it's you there, but you don't really you don't really understand yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe maybe I was naive because I didn't I didn't, I think I didn't a lot of go to uni or, or anything yeah. like that, so I didn't understand any of that. And and obviously we don't get taught it in schools, which I, yeah. I do think we should, but we don't. Um, and I didn't really have anyone to lean on that I could, I could go, look, what, what should I do here? What should I do here? So we kind of, we figured out the hard way, but, um, yeah, it, it, that's probably the biggest thing is, is I would definitely align yourself with, with, with a good accountancy firm. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So leaving year one then, so just complete mm. sheer resilience and just, just mindset of, we're going to make it happen. What, what did this sort of next two years look like then? So, um, did you start hiring people? obviously i'm yeah. assuming then obviously by that point you can back to finding your existing client or your old clients like mm. what mm. what did what did your yours and your business partner's business look like sort of from year one to, to year three how did things change yeah so year, year year one to year three i think the strategy was really to to to, to, to grow to uh, i think we said 10 okay so from i think we, hired, the first we, we made our we made our first hire i think after after about two months of being in 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 the office um and then we and then we obviously wanted to train this guy get get him billing and then yeah within 18 months we'd said look what we want where where we want to be we want to get complete domination of of the market in terms of working with a lot of these clients and to do that we need people that can deliver so luke and i got all the business on and we had consultants in that were delivering him and i were still billing as well so yeah from 2011 to sort of 2013 
14, we grew to, yeah, uh, eight, nine, 10, and, and naturally obviously needed bigger, bigger space, bigger space. And then I think the, 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 be the best thing we ever actually did was um, when we got to a level where we had some good consultants, we, we, we kind of transitioned from, you know, a, a one man band startup. We needed to have something else that actually attracted people to us as well. So we started working on obviously some social media stuff. We started, we, we moved into a really nice office um, in the middle of the city, paid through the roof for it. Um, but mm. it, it really, it, it, it was a strange thing because we'd gone from, you know, working in a bit of a dungeon yeah, um, in a basement to pretty much top floor, overlooked the whole of the city, overlooked the Gherking, amazing office. And actually three or four people kind of left within a month or two of us really? in there. Because, and actually, when, when, when we then sat down and spoke about it, and, and we, we, we then brought in three or four more polished, more professional guys into the business who, who really, we really drove forward the business that way. So I think the people that, that, that had left kind of thought, hmm, the direction this is going probably isn't for me. I'm more, yeah. I, liked, I liked working in the basement type thing. So yeah, yeah. it was a really good, it was a really, it was a really eye-opening change of, of the new people that were attracted to come and work for us to the people that left and 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 that's really when we then um we really then started to think well actually we we can become the biggest the biggest provider of of of, of staff in this market um which 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 we we we, we did in sort of 2014 and, and we still are today okay cool so uh, we always talk about i mean it always always sort of say this but it's just so ironic that sort of one of the biggest challenges for, for people like you is hiring for your own mm. business. Mm. So I guess during, during that period, obviously got, got a nicer office, growing the business, hiring more people, I guess like how, and what was a sell to people to, to join your business? Because I think in London, so many recruitment businesses, like what, as you said, I think you've spoken about it a lot. People had to buy into you, the vision, blah, blah, blah. Like, mm. What, what was, what was the, the vision to people and how did you communicate that? Because I think that, that's what a lot of people struggle when they're at a business of 10 people, eight people and find it really hard to push past that. Um, mm. And we've spoken about this a lot. When, when you're a business owner, you're a quite small business. Sometimes you can sort of feel like, oh, like you're obviously confident in yourself and the business, but like, why would they join me? And then there's all these other businesses they could join and the bigger and better, blah, mm. blah, blah. So like, how, how what was the strategy to um get people into your business like how did you go about that was it just straight um pe speaking to people that you currently employ do you, do you have any mates that are in recruitment or mm. would you go down the gym speaking to pts like what what, what was the <laughs> what, what how how did you how did you get people to join your business um I, yeah I, I, a mix of everything so yeah a, a lot of the time um you know people that worked for us we would we would obviously ask do you know anyone if you, if you when, when we were looking to hire do you know anyone that, that that's interested get them to come in and have a chat and mm. um and and i think i think what i think what really does help is or was that i was still so young you know I was yeah still, i was still i was still so young so people were coming in my age a year or two older than me that, that i'm interviewing and they're not coming in and meeting a 50 year old guy that's a, yeah, bit of a yeah, dinosaur yeah. and that's you know I, I i was I was into things that they were into, you know, I, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to go to the pub and, you know, I was still happy to go out and get pissed. And, yeah, you know, yeah. I, 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 I was doing the same things they were doing. I just started my own business at a, a, a lot younger age. So I think, I think people liked the fact that we were, that mm. we were young. It's a lot more, you know, it can be a lot more relatable, can't it? A, a lot more relatable. And, 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 you know, mm. that, that does help when you, when you meet someone and they can buy into you or, or they can, they can, um, they can understand you and what you're doing and things yeah. that you like and things that you're going through. So I think that, that definitely helps. Um, and yeah, you know, we, 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 we obviously, we, we, we didn't really advertise as, as such, but if we met someone or someone that knew someone, um, you know, and I've got, I've got a lot of friends in, in London still. And, and, you know, I think the beauty that I had as well is that obviously I'm from Brighton. So I knew a lot of people in Brighton and naturally a lot of people move from Brighton and want to go and work in London. Yeah. And, you know, so that, that, that was a good catchment for, for us being able to get people that I kind of knew of or knew someone that knew them and was, was able to bring them in. Um, because I, I, I do think as a small business where everything's organically grown and, and you know, this, it, was, it was our livelihood. I think being able to trust your employees is a, is, is a really big thing. And, and still, I still believe that to this day, you need to be able to trust people to, 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 to get on with what they need to do and, and to come in and, 
and 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 work as hard as as, as I felt I was doing and, and my business partner was doing. Okay, cool. Um, and I guess uh, what what I'd be interested in because you mentioned it loosely. So, did you have did you have more of a model where you so you and your business partner were doing more business development and then early on the guys were delivering? So more of a one eighty model. Yeah. Yeah, so the the majority of the consultants were, were, were just focused on 180, and, and 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 actually, I think a lot of people seem to think that being a 180 recruiter is a bad thing. Mm. When I completely disagree, because business developing, give or take, doesn't make you money. And if you're in recruitment to make money, what do you want to do? You want to place people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you know, we had a business model that that my business partner and I pretty much account managed and, and delivered into the clients, but the consultants, all they had to do was go and get candidates. Mm. So, and this is what I'm saying. A lot of people think, they, they think it looks good if they're like, oh yeah, I've got a meeting here or a meeting here. Mm. It's like, that's all good and well, and it is good for building relationships, but you're in recruitment because you want to make money and it's not, a, it's not a, a, an industry where you need to have a degree or you need to, yeah, you know, yeah. so... Uh, we we had a business model that we had a, a lot of a lot of guys and girls within the business that they just wanted to make money and to yeah. do that all they all they needed to do was just deliver into the accounts that that, that we'd bought on and it, it it worked you know people were coming in and so I said, is it still like that now um, not as it's, much. it's still like that now with with, with the juniors in in um, in the optical market yeah it's it's still like that with with the juniors we bring in they they are purely for a year or two focused on delivering we've got two or three guys that now account manage because my business partner manages that business and, and he obviously does the day-to-day -day operations. So he's not as, as hands-on in the market. So we've got two or three senior guys that manage the accounts. Yeah, uh, It's the same business model. So we've got two or three guys that manage the accounts and deliver. And then we've got the other guys that then just deliver on the jobs because mm. you, you don't, you don't, you don't need everyone to BD because as, as, yeah. as you and I know, BDing any, 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 any process can take a month, two, three, four, and you're taking someone away who's a good biller because the natural progression people think is that, well, this guy's a good biller, so he should be a manager. Now, good billers don't make good managers. Yeah. So if someone's a good biller, let them bill. Mm. If, if they need to be incentivized more, bump up their commission or mm. incentivize them by doing X amount. You, you don't need to give them management responsibility, in, in, in my opinion. And, and that's yeah. the business model we, we, we have, particularly you know, within the high street um, healthcare stuff, because, it, because it, it, it is a smaller industry. So... It's not, you know, it's not an industry like technology where there are a million clients. There's only a select amount of clients, and if we're if we're the top supplier to all of them, there's no need for you. Don't need to be there. Yeah, you don't. You just need yeah. to deliver on them. Sure. So, okay, it's interesting because I think I think a lot more recruitment businesses are um, using that model. I think because mm. I think also I think as well if you're if you're a three sixty consultant and business development is is just you you find that really difficult and then all of a sudden there's a career path that you can just focus on the delivery part and that's actually what you're really great at mm. it's just it's just a great option for people i think again if obviously some people do want to do three sixty and mm. and like the opportunity to bring on their own clients deliver blah 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 but I'm hearing so many more teams now that have delivery functions mm. and it's super effective. I guess, yeah, I, guess yeah, I guess, I guess part of it as well in line with your point is, um, Oh, like, um, people think that they have to do business development or whatever it is, or it's not a progression, I guess. Cause I think people associate that they won't earn as much money. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Cause I feel like mm. typically, I mean, typically the commission structure goes up when you bring on your own clients. Mm. Do, do you know mm. what I mean? So I guess yeah. it's like, how, how did you out of interest, like how did you incentivize, your consultants on delivery like how was it was it just on if you per placement you get x fee or was it was it quite lucrative like how did you make sure that these people were incentivized yeah yeah so so our our, our commission in um in, in optical is, is uncapped so okay as, as essentially if, if someone's doing two three four deals a month and they want it they still want to earn more money then we'll incentivize them okay so if you do over four deals this month or if you do over x amount this quarter we'll give you X bonus. We'll mm. give you, and, and it, it can be monetary. It can be, we'll give you a holiday. We'll give you extra days off, whatever, whatever it is that they yeah, want yeah. to do. If they, if they want to be a, a manager and they want to manage an account, that, that, that is absolutely fine. We can give them that. But I, I wouldn't just say to someone, yeah, you can be a manager. If they don't fully understand that actually 50% of your time now is going to be taken up with someone speaking else. to HR, yeah. speaking to line managers and dealing with that's that 50% that you're currently just spending sourcing candidates is now gone. Mm. So we, we, we do give incentives for, for account managers. So we give incentives if, if someone places into their account 
they get they get they get a um, they get a, they get a bonus per per placement. So mm. we, we 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 mix it, but you know, as 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 I said, I think good 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 billers don't necessarily make good account managers or or, or good good team managers because mm. it's certain qualities. And 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 on the flip side, you can have a really good account manager that the client absolutely loves. Doesn't mean they're the best biller, but, but, but yeah. they are vital to the business as well. So you you got to find the right balance, I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I guess how how did you what so coming into obviously year three year four growing the business got a nice new office etc like what what was the strategy to grow then because i guess a lot of people get caught i mean the the majority of the recruit uk recruitment market is made up of where your business was at three four years in that sort of sub 10 staff that's 80 percent of the uk recruitment industry so i guess like what again i know it's all happened organically but sort of in hindsight, what, what was the things that you think you did well that enabled you to break through that typical glass ceiling of recruitment business owners that are at 12 staff and keep hiring two people, then they lose two people or mm. can't get past a 15, 18 headcount? Like, what was the plan to sort of push this business forward, Dan? Um, so, so for me, my, my long-term goal was to always move back to, to, to Sussex. Okay. So, you know, I was, I was coming up to being in London for nearly, nearly 10 years, you know, it's, it's 2016 now, maybe. So we've, we've been going for, for sort of four or five years and we've grown the business to a really good, a really good place. And, and having two senior guys, so it was me and, and Luke, and actually we've grown the business to a point that I, I, I felt like I needed to do something else. I, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to go into a new market and, 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 and try something else. What was you doing at that point then? What was your role? So, so my role, so day to day, to day, day to day, I was more account managing, doing yeah. all the training, okay. uh, bill, bill, billing still. Um, and ultimately that's really been my, my main alongside running the business. But my function within, within the business at the time was more, you know, taking the guys out yeah and um, you know I, I was more the guy that that sort of led from the front and Luke yeah, was the yeah. guy that really helped the help the business together from an operational standpoint which sure. as, as I say com- completely fits into who we, like he's quite cautious and I'm I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm, le- I'm less so so it, re- it really worked really well so I'd kind of got itchy feet and and really wanted to to, to, to do something else and um well because you weren't yeah, top I, of the leaderboard anymore <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, no. no. So basically, <laughs> you know, I, 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 I trained up four or five of the guys to, to, to you know, really, really good billers. You know, we had guys doing two fifty, three hundred k a year consistently for for a couple of years, and and I felt, you know, actually, I, I was still doing two hundred k, and and I was like, well, look, someone else can do that. There's enough work there for someone yeah. to, to pick up to pick up the stuff that I would do. So, and we built up enough revenue, and. Um, and um and and really it was you know a good really good friend of mine that I went to school with who worked for a firm um technology firm down in Brighton and him and I had always spoke on on nights out and and when we got together and and I've always said to him look we should we should do something we should definitely do something when you're ready let me know and I was really coming to that point where I was ready um and he then messaged me kind of out of the blue and said yeah I'm ready let's meet so that was that was late 2016 start of 2017 um so various discussions with 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 him about the markets and and really preparing how i could integrate myself and move and set up a new office down in brighton okay so this is under the vivid group and this is still under the vivid group so so basically luke and i met with um with 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 ben and um yeah and and really just I, i felt this was a really good time to to branch out diversify i felt the business in london was was really a, 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 a good stage um and we so, had enough revenue to, to, to fund a new business for for six months to a year as, as as a minimum without making any money yeah um so so, so yeah. by that point so, sorry so by that point just for context you, you obviously back operating in optical which is obviously mm. historically what you did and was you doing obviously the pharmacy stuff as well at that point as well? Yeah, yeah. So we were doing a mix of a mix of everything. So the main the main market was the optical market, yeah, and that was doing really well. But we still dabbled in in the other markets as well. But yeah. I, I really, I just, I just fancied doing something completely different. I just really? wanted to try my hand at something different and just and just give it a go. Okay. And, and again, it it sounds stupid. My mindset was, well, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> and yes, I mean the what you know now the, the stakes are a bit higher because essentially I'm managing myself out of 
of one business to then go into another business. But you know, what, what was, what was the worst that could happen? Yeah. We might mm. lose, we might lose X amount of money, hundred K or something that we, that we'd have to invest in it. But mm. the upside was that we'd have a, a, a new market that is 10, 15, 20 times bigger than the market we're currently in. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was the risk that I took and, and, and it, it, it did coincide with my, my wife's from, from Lewis and, um, I used to come down, we used to come back on the weekends and go to Lewis and I, I, I absolutely love, love the area and, and really love her family. So I was like, yeah, I want to, I want to move back out. I want to move out of London. I'd yeah. kind of done nine, nine, ten years. So, and it all just, it, you know, the timing really, really tied well, in well. And, fair and, enough. Yeah. And, um, okay. and then, yeah, so we, we, we launched, um, yeah, we launched technology in, in, in 2017 and, and that's just, that's just taken really? off. <clears throat> okay. And then just, just so let, let's dig into that. So just, just to help me understand in the context, so was the communication, so obviously was the, the tech part, part of the Vivid group, right? Yeah. That was, that was the plan, right? So I guess, yeah. so was the communication to the people you built relationships with that you got them up to become really good consultants, blah, 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 was like, what was the communication to them? Like it wasn't, oh, you're not going to see me anymore. I'm, I'm bailing out and we're starting something new. It's, so this is like, how did you communicate that? Because I feel, I so, feel like you yeah. don't want that to come across. No, that's a good question. Idea. No, 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 ab- ab- absolutely. And and I, I do think a lot, a lot of people were disappointed that I was that, that I was leaving um, and, and and moving and setting up a new office. But the communication was, well, look, the the the, the company is growing. We're growing yeah. into new markets. The opportunity for someone to step into my shoes now is 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 there. Okay, nice. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. who who who's hungriest to go and grab it with both hands and and, and run with it. You know, I was yeah. kind of passing <laughs> passing over the torch as such to someone who who wanted to you know who wanted to step up and um and and that the communication was you know I, I still I still go to London. I'm still in London every yeah, every yeah. Week so it wasn't other, like you're never going to see so, me again. It was just more no. of I'm not going to be the guy that's leading by the front anymore. This is yeah, why this no, is no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and everyone, you know, I think everyone, I think most people, most people probably knew that I was at a point where I needed a new challenge. I needed to do something. Yeah. I needed to do something new. Um, and yeah, I, I think everyone was, everyone was, was, was really supportive of it, which is good. Okay. So when, so when you started with, so, so it was Ben, you said that you, yeah. you're, yeah. Okay. Actually, so two, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Was no, you, no, I was going to say, so, and he, 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 um, he had a really good friend as well that wanted to come and work work for us. So, um, yeah, the two of them the two of them came in, which was which which was really good. Okay, and so then so then, what was your involvement at this point? Then was you back to learning the new market, getting on the phones? What, yeah. what was the crack? Because that was that yeah, yeah, yeah. much what you did. You just got involved. So they told you yeah. what? Obviously, I'm sure they said to you, Steve, this is our plan. These are the markets we're going to go over. This is our sort of strategy as to how we're going to do it. And then mm. what you just plugged in and said, right, okay, I'm, I'm going to help you make it happen. Yeah. So I think the, the, the beauty of it was, is that I'd, I'd obviously set up and run a business for six years. Yeah. So learn those guys, yeah. So, and, and, and those guys, you know, they bought the, 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 the knowledge of different tech sectors. Yeah. Um, I bought the knowledge of how to run a business. So I basically said to them, look, you teach me about the market, market the way yeah. that you've worked before. I can teach you how I've BD'd and how I get candidates. And alongside that, I'll teach you how to run business. I'll teach you mm. how to how we can grow this business together, essentially. So, you know, again, very fortunate. They both they both bought into to my, to my vision and what and what I saw and and what I could see and how this company could grow. And and massively, I, I bought into those two and and absolutely love them both to bits. And you know, it, it's it's it it just worked. It just it just worked. We were all we're all of the same age. We 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 were all just about to get married or just got married. <laughs> so we were all like. We were all going yeah, through the aligned. same things again and we could all empathize mm. with each other. So we, yeah, absolutely. Good work. We were all aligned with, with what we wanted to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, my wife did say, she was like, you, you, you're, why, are you, why are you going to learn something completely new that you know yeah. nothing about? And I knew nothing about the tech sectors at this point. Absolutely nothing. It's something that I've learned um, and something that I've really enjoyed learning over the last three, four years. So yeah, we, 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 we got an office in, um, in, in Brighton and, and, and again, it was kind of back to square one. Look, really? we need revenue let's pick up the phone let's go back old school we need to pick mm. up the phone and and again those two had non-compete so we didn't want to step on anyone's toes we, we went after completely new clients slightly different sectors and and again for me it's a good thing because it teaches you to get out of your comfort zone and to go and learn a new market that you don't know but you need to make work that for yeah. me i think hu- hunger hunger in any business or sport or anything is so important to have that to have that hunger you look at most of the best sportsmen or sportswomen in the world a lot of them come from nothing. 
yeah, they're yeah. striving for There's something. No plan B. You see what I mean? There's no plan B. You know, look at the the the, the Williams sisters. Like mm. they came from the worst place in the whole of America to become two of the greatest and it, because yeah, they yeah, had yeah. to. They, they, they had, had to. Yeah. You know, having that hunger um, for me is massively important. You need to strive to to to, to get something. Mm. Okay, so as we, as we talk about the sort of latter end of where we're coming up to today, then I guess mm. it'd be interesting just to get your thoughts on. How how different did that those first year two years? How different were those first year two years compared to you starting in your dungeon in your bedroom? Do you know what I mean? Because you've learned a lot, yeah. you've come a long way. So I guess what yeah. what did you do differently? Um, I think well, I, I was I was obviously a lot more prepared from yeah. a business perspective. Everything was everything was 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 set up. You know, we've got I've got an absolutely amazing accountants. Yeah, um, so it, the infrastructure. Even, even, it, the, it, the infrastructure, absolutely. You know, hosted, ho- having hosted desktops so you can work from wherever. Yeah. And everything was set up, you know, so we could really just concentrate and focus on bringing in revenue from, yeah. from day one. And, you know, we had a target, I think, of like 200 or something in the first year. And we absolutely blew that out of the water and, and, and did really well in, in, in the first year. And Why do you think you blew that out of the water? Um, I, a, a couple of reasons, really. One, um, ben, ben Hall is the best BD guy I've ever, ever come across in my life. Why? You know, he, um, he just knows how to probe and ask the right questions. Yeah. And you know, his, his, his job briefing or, or his intro into a client is, 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 is phenomenal. Um, what, is this on in mail or on the phone? No, no, this is on the phone or, or, or <laughs> via email. He, he's, he's just an awesome, awesome BD guy. So, yeah. And then, and then almost coincidentally and i didn't know this at the time but the other ben that i brought in is by far the best biller i know so <laughs> it was like they, they really yeah, yeah okay yeah yeah and, and then somewhere within that i i kind of fit in and, and pieced it together so the three of us together it, it just worked and a really actually, good team it was just a really good team and you know we all got on really well and and it just it just worked we were in a, a, a small little office in, in in brighton and and then you know we were able to hire revenue was coming in and we were like right let's 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 move and again mm. it was it was basically the same process that I'd gone through, but it was a thousand times, a thousand times quicker. You know, it, mm. it all happened so, so much, so much quicker. Um, and that is, you know, a hats off to those two because they really bought into the direction that I felt we could go. And, and, um, and now, you know, the three of us are, are, are all of the same mindset that we, we just want to continue to grow and continue to push the consultants that we have in that business. And, and we've got some, some amazing consultants in, in the company now. And, yeah, we're we're in a we're in a we're in a great position now to 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 keep to keep growing and keep progressing. That's awesome. So, how many of you guys mm. are there in that under that? Um, so, in in the in the Brighton office, there's eleven of us. Cool. Um, so we've got an office manager. She's absolutely awesome. Um, she's she's actually made me realise that I'm a control freak, which is which is really? a good, which is actually a good thing. And and she's really has to like force me to just let her deal with with a lot of the stuff. So yeah, yeah. So we're we're at eleven now, and 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 that. You know, and again, you know, organically, we've, we've diversified the markets we're in. So we do various different markets within, within tech. And one of the guys is, is growing a new, um, a new market in, in sort of AI drug discovery. Um, one of the girls is, is, has come in from a, temp, from a temp recruiter into a perm recruiter. And she's absolutely hit the ground running. She, she's Love growing that. a new market. So we're just, we're just sort of spreading and spreading, you know, spreading out, which, and I guess we'll come on to it, which is why we, we've, we've been able to, to continue as, as normal as possible. Yeah, that, that's what I was gonna, what's going on. That's what I was going to segue into, mate. I guess mm. Steve today, then the business owner. Yeah, what, what, what's been going So obviously everything that you just said there makes mm. sense, right? So, and was that, was that intentional? I know you said from the sort of day what you reckon, like you didn't want to, you, did you consciously not want to have all your eggs in one basket? That was, yeah. that was always the plan. Yeah, yeah, ab- ab- absolutely. Because um, the, the only reason why I think that's interesting is because you always hear the advice now in recruitment of the sort of inch wide, mile deep. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, you're still in tech and there's obviously, I'm assuming it's niches within tech, right? Mm-hmm. I guess it's just yeah. interesting that you've consciously made sure that, yeah, like you, all, all your clients and relationships and all the people that help you, gener- help you generate revenue and grow your business isn't all in one place, which means if they get affected, you get affected and... Mm. Do you get what I mean? So I guess how how has that helped you adapt today then, and and how has that helped you in in today's current circumstances? Yeah, I think well, I think two, twofold really. Firstly, 
when I set up the business initially in 2011, we were in the middle of a recession. Mm. So, you know, when, when this, when this all kicked off, I felt very prepared for it because mm. I'm used to only working on one job, two jobs. You know, I'm used to having clients pull jobs and clients go, look, hiring freeze for six months or whatever it might be. Yeah. So the, 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 the beauty, as I've said, because we, because we're quite diverse in, in the industries that we do, you know, we don't have 10, 15 consultants all working in the same market, all going after the same clients. Yeah. And when two of those clients pull, um, you know, you've got 10 people working on one job because we have different markets and almost it, it was conscious that we have different markets and we didn't want to have everyone working in the same market. And we never fill, we never fill one, one market with six, seven, eight consultants. We will only ever have two, three, four consultants as a max in, in one particular market because that, that enables us to either pass off jobs to someone else. So at the moment we've got a couple of people that are working in a market that haven't worked on similarly aligned but they're, they're they're adapting to to a new market um and 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 also i think a lot of people you know the people that i have particularly in in the, in the tech business at the moment you know they all have a, a, a value they are all very very um critical to the business i think a lot of companies make the mistake of they move into a bigger office and they've got 15 desks oh let's just hire 15 people you don't mm. need 15 people it does you know your, your cost your cost of the business of the office is the same whether you have one person in there or 15. So I think a lot of businesses have probably struggled now and had to put people on furlough, et cetera, because they haven't really looked at who's actually bringing in value to the business. Yeah. And do I need to hire someone? If you don't need to hire someone, don't just hire someone because it looks good when other people look through yeah, the yeah, amount no, of people right. on, on I your think, I think that I think that's what I think. So I think that's one of the things that the conversations that I've been having a lot is that mm. I really think this is going to put in check people like you other recruitment business owners that well hang on a minute maybe i have got a bit tangled in worrying about mm. how many people i have in the office rather than absolutely how many how, how many how how many people in my office are actually working at full capacity and how many absolutely. people have i invested in to make sure yeah so i think i think that is going to put a lot of that in check i think that's what's mm. going to be interesting that um mm. those yeah the the people that have had that mindset of i need 30 40 50 people i need like you said got 50 mm. new desks that means i need 50 new consultants get them billing 100k plus that means x revenue well actually well, look at the people you've already got in your four walls first and mm. and those types of things exactly. and i think that's definitely going to be interesting that do you, do you think yeah that, do you think that's gonna do you think that's gonna lead to more leaner smaller recruitment businesses um it could do yeah yeah mm. it, it, it could do and I, and I think i think you know a lot of people will you know, before this has all happened, they're like, oh yeah, let's go and set up an office in America or let's have another office here. And, and for me, it's, 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 it's a bit smoke and mirrors, really. It's like, yeah. if you have a genuine need to have another office in a different country, I completely get it. If you have a genuine need and that, that business there has its own set of clients, I, I completely get it. But if you can, you know, we're so lucky now. We, we, you can work from anywhere in the world. You don't yeah. need to be in that country to do business in that country. So, you know, mo most, of, most of my clients are in the U.S. And yeah. that's, that's, that's really the markets I work are, are, are obviously on, on U.S. time zones. But I think a lot of people probably realized, well, I don't need to just have that on, on, on our page and, and be promoting <laughs> on LinkedIn that we've opened an office in New York or wherever it might be. Unless you have a genuine reason to do it, because I think a lot of people now are looking at it going, oh, well, I've got this office, this office, an office in America that actually doesn't make that much money. And everyone's probably going to have to strip back and refine yeah, their yeah. business models in order to get through, you know, and come out the other side and, and still be intact and still have people that, 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 that want to stay in this industry. Because I think a lot of people will, will probably jump out of this industry as, as a result of what's happened because it is volatile. And, and you know, there's no guarantee mm. that, that you're going to have a job at, at, at the end of it. So, yeah, I do, I do think you're right. I think, I think people will strip back and, and really really take care on, on who they're bringing in and you know am I bringing this person in uh, as a bit of an ego trip because we've got five more desks or am I bringing these people in because we have a client who have a hundred jobs that we need bodies to be filling these positions for yeah yeah what um what what have been what sort of been the most difficult what's been the most difficult part for you then over the last couple of weeks would you say um for me for me personally it's been I've, I've missed the interaction you know day day to day I think yeah it's not with, quite the same over a screen, is it? No, it's, it's, it's not <laughs> the same. And, and, and my, my personality definitely lends itself to, to being in the office, geeing everyone up. I'm, I'm that, that type of personality. So for me, it's been, that's, that's probably been the, 
the most difficult. Mm. Um, I've, I've, I've really, I've actually really enjoyed being at home and spending more time with my wife and my dog. And, um, that's been absolutely amazing, but I'm, I'm definitely ready to, to, mm. to get back into the office and, 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 um, that's yeah, missing, missing just the day to day interaction. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, being able to just be with people who are like-minded day to day in an office environment is definitely, um, definitely, definitely. Best. No, I definitely agree on that. And I guess, like you're, you're clearly someone that's resilient and and been through difficult periods. I guess, mm. what, what have you been, what have you been fo- focusing on day to day, and and likewise, I guess, speaking to your team about fo- what they should be focused on day to day to to make mm. sure that you give yourself the best possible chance of achieving the outcomes you want right now what are you focusing on so to to be honest my 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 focus and priority has changed slightly from today to say beginning or middle of march you know over the last six eight weeks it's changed slightly my my priority really is is actually my all of my teams you know london team and and down here in terms of just the the the, the, the mental state i think yeah you know the this is going to have a massive effect on a, on a, on a lot of people. And, and you're, you're probably the same as, same as me, you know, I, I've had days where I've been really demotivated and Definitely. felt flat and, um, you know, and, and I'd like to think that I'm, I'm, a, I'm my, my mindset, I'm, I'm very positive, but there have been days where I've just been, yeah. I've just felt defeated. So, you know, there are people that, that have, uh, you know, a bit more fragile state mentally that, that are going to, that are going to have suffered and, and are going to be struggling here. So my, my priority really is just reassuring, everyone within our business that you know they have a job to come back to yeah. when we're back in the office it's you know we're not making any cuts we're not you know we're not closing anything down we, we you know we, we we have the cash flow to continue and, and, we, and we're still doing well you know so i think my mm. my day-to-day really is just checking in with everyone over communicating um, yeah yeah almost over communicating you know yeah. the whatsapp groups going mental and everyone's got different bits they're sending in which is good fun but yeah r- really for me it's it's it is just more about the people because I think without the people in your business, you, you've got nothing. And if you come yeah. back to an office that everyone is flat and, and demotivated, it's, you're then going to have another month where it's going to take yeah. you to pick up. So, or, or even yeah. longer. I think, I think, or that, even longer. I think, Absolutely. I think, yeah, I think I know you've seen it a lot online, like try and make the most out of being on furlough or whatever. I mm. think, I think one, don't be too hard on yourself, but two, mm. I think you'd be naive to think that, sort of you could sort of completely relax check out for six mm. weeks three weeks however long oh, yeah. it is and Absolutely. and just pick up back at the phone and get to it i think mm. i think don't underestimate the amount of people that are wearing the storm right now and, and trying to rise to mm. the occasion doing what they're doing and, and they will have an edge over people that mm. are just hiding under a rock and waiting for this blow over i, I think you'd be really naive yeah, yeah. That you could just crack yeah. off um, yeah, ab- 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 absolutely. I, I yeah. completely agree. Um, but yeah, so I mean, our, our priorities have shifted slightly in terms of where we wanted to be by the end of this year. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really disappointing because we had, we had our best ever quarter as a group um, in, in Q1. So I think we would have, we would have had our, you know, well, we definitely would have had the best ever year, but yeah. you know, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm definitely looking at it as a positive that actually I think, and I think most businesses probably will, is that actually, you know, working from home and, and allowing people to work from home as and when they need to is, is, is definitely there as, as, as an option. An option um, yeah. I've been so proud of how my team have, have adapted and, um, you know, everyone has, has, has really, really stepped up to the plate and is really accountable now, um, you know, to deliver on the jobs that, they, that they're still working on. So it, there's, there's definitely positives to come out of it. Mm. Um, I just, yeah, I just want to get back in the office and get to the pub on a Friday. Yeah. Agreed, <laughs> so look, before we finish, I guess just, just one or two last things, I guess just sort of um, just keen to get your sort of final thoughts and um, some final points on people listening who either are thinking about starting their own recruitment business or sort of are um, building their recruitment business right now or are a recruitment business owner. So I guess what, what have been the sort of key learnings for you then Steve as a recruitment business owner over the last nine years that, sort of is always your go-to advice or things you speak about when people say, Steve, like, what are your thoughts on this? Or what, what are the mm. things that come up for you when I say, what are the key things that you'd want to communicate to people that want to start their own recruitment business or in, in that journey right now? Um, for, that's a good question. Um, I, I, w- I would probably say it's, it's having that self-belief. Mm. I think you need to you need to believe that you're good at your job. You need to yeah. believe that you can be successful 
Um, and, I, and I really do think self-reflecting and, and accountability is, is, is yeah. massive. I think so many people now are so quick to blame. Oh, I don't like the office. Oh, I don't so like that. True, yeah. I don't like that. I don't, you know, I think you can only, you, the, the, the only thing that you can control is yourself, how you apply yourself day to day, how you react, how you adapt and, and how you overcome that. And I think, you know, you, you've, and this is some, something that I, you know, I, I don't blame anyone else for anything. Anything that happens is, is completely either my fault right or wrong so I, I think for me that's been the biggest thing is that actually you know being and that's even as a business yourself, owner right because you yeah, again yeah, even if you get caught point, if you get point pointing the finger as that as well that's mm. when you're susceptible to probably making bad decisions and mentally that can affect you yeah, as well ab- ab- absolutely if, if you're not able to grow your business as a business owner and you're you're you're, you're blaming your staff oh no one's billing well enough yeah no doing this no what are you doing to enable mm. your staff to be able to bill more what, what, mm. what help are you offering? What training, what advice, what are you doing that's going to enable them to be successful within your business? So yeah. it, it, I, I think accountability and, and self-reflection is, 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 is massive. And, you know, I think everyone's had the time over the last two, three months to <laughs> self-reflect really um, yeah, on, on, what, on what they do well, what they don't do well and, and, and how we can adapt to that. And yeah, I think for me, massively accountability as an individual um, as a business owner, more importantly is, yeah, absolutely. What, what am I doing? to enable my staff to one, be happy to achieve what they want to achieve within the business and, and, and three want to come to work. I think that's a yeah. real important thing. You know, I, I love going to work, but I, I would, it's my, it's my, you know, it's my yeah, business. Yeah, but yeah. I, I can confidently say, I, I don't think one of my employees dreads going to work. I, I, re- yeah. I really don't. And, and that's, that's a beautiful thing to have as a culture where people want to come in. They want, mm. they want to come into work. Um, and hopefully this has highlighted it for most people that actually, if you don't like your job, go and do something mm, else if you do love yeah. it step up another 50 20 15 20 percent if you can because you, mm. you you're, you're realizing now how much you appreciate it it's definitely going to put that in check isn't it like are you mm. doing what you want to be doing because absolutely yeah i love that mate so two mm. final questions first one i normally on. just ask people what you're excited about what you want to shout about but i just thought probably have to change that so i guess what what are you most excited about to do post covid mate <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm having a baby so wow. um we're expecting our first child 21st of july so wow. um hopefully is, things are a bit more less yeah, do you know what i mean I, i'd yeah, like to think hopefully so hopefully things will have calmed down by then because that's amazing you know, we, we, we want our family and stuff to be able to come and meet the baby so yeah so that's really my my focus really is um is how do you feel about that for that i can't wait i'm i'm i'm, I'm absolutely buzzing yeah. um that's awesome, yeah, um, you know, my, my wife's been absolutely amazing. She's she's just an unbelievable person. So she's 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 ready. I'm ready, and um, yeah, it's it's going to be an interesting, yeah. um, you know, integrating back into the office and then probably having to take time out um, for the baby. But I, I, it's it's for sure going to be worth it. So that yeah, for me, really, that's yeah, the, that's awesome. That's the thing I'm looking forward to. I the love most. that, mate. Final mm. question, J- just sort of parting words, really. So if you could communicate to every single recruiter out there they'd listen to you they'd take on steve's advice it could be a phrase a word a sentence what what would you what would you say to the people if they were to be listening to you mate and, and take on your advice what what would uh, you communicate to everyone out there um there's a saying that i read when i was younger like 10 okay. and this is always always stuck with me um some succeed because they're destined to but most succeed because they're determined to. Yeah. And that's really like a, a mantra that I, that, that I love because it is, it, it, I, for me, I, it is just hard work. Mm. I think the, the hardest working people tend to, tend to be successful or tend to be happy. And, and as I said before, success isn't a monetary value thing. Success is you being fulfilled and being happy in whatever it is that you're doing. You know, mm. some of the most successful people I know are, 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 have just been full-time mums. That, mm. That's, you know, it's not a monetary value thing. So for me, I think happiness and, and success should go hand in hand. I don't think there's any point being successful if you're not happy. Yeah. So, no. you know, I think that's you, awesome, you, mate. I think, <clears> um, I think you've lived and breathed that, mate. I think it's easy to <laughs> say, it's easy to say I read this quote and it's a great quote, but I think <laughs> better to say you've, you've lived and breathed that. So I think that's awesome, mate. Oh, thank um, you, mate. It's very kind of you. Look, Steve, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah. Thanks and, very uh, much. Thanks for joining really me, mate. It. Cheers. Yeah. Thanks very much.